Layla has big dreams and a bright future. She also lives with cerebral palsy, which makes handwriting difficult, so she wants to sit her Year 12 exams on a computer. So why can't she? You wouldn't know by looking at her as she strides along the running track, but 16-year-old Layla is vision impaired and lives with cerebral palsy. I want to go to the Paralympics one day, Commonwealth Games. Um, I want to do some little international events as well, hopefully in the near future. Layla's cerebral palsy affects mainly her right side, impacting the function of her arms and legs, making Layla more prone to tripping when walking or running. But mum Sam says it won't stop her. Sam, no doubt Layla has had challenges that she's had to overcome throughout her life. Mm -hmm. How has it been watching her overcome those hurdles? I'm in awe because uh, she's always fought for herself. She's always advocated for herself. I mean, I'm talking about on track and in education and all that. And she's one that doesn't want to give up. Layla might be great at running, but she says she's lousy at writing. Day to day, how does your disability impact you? In writing, like, it would take me longer to write than, like, the average person. And my writing would be, like, more illegible or harder to read. And obviously it would cause me more pain when writing. But throughout my time at school, I've been using my laptop for all my assessments. Except next month's HSC, the New South Wales Education Standards Authority, or NESA, has banned Layla from using her laptop in the exams. By the end of the day, I still have weaker arms than the average person, so I don't understand why they had to refuse it because now I'm only going to go like backwards rather than forwards. It is. It's a slap in the face from Nessa. Yep. Layla is bright and studious, so much so that her school invited her to do the English advanced portion of her HSC one year early while in year 11. Sam, tell me a little bit about Layla. What was she like as a child growing up? She was very challenging as a child, um, always inquisitive. She was just different. She stepped out of kindergarten on the timetables, like, who does that? Layla's school has always supported her need to use a laptop, but Nessa, which oversees the HSC, won't permit it, despite its mantra. I have two doctors that, for vision and for my cerebral palsy, that have um, recommended that I use laptops and that's why I have because it puts me on an even playing field with everyone else. Layla, this is some of your handwriting here. Yeah. Can you understand that? Um, somewhat, not really, because like most of the time I would have to correct it afterwards, which mm -hmm. I didn't have time in mm -hmm. this exam. I can see you've crossed out words. Yeah. I have ataxia, so it's one of the like most rare forms of cerebral palsy. If I get like too tired, my hands will shake. So this is not your best work, is it? No, it's quite poor for me. Even though Talk about hard, poor, Nessa didn't even provide Layla an explanation. And we've provided reports from the vision ophthalmologist, we've provided reports from the paediatrician that's been with her for a while, we've provided reports from an OT who was here for three hours and still said no. A Nessa spokesperson told A Current Affair that the organisation focuses on the impact of the disability on how a student functions in an exam setting and has offered Layla a scribe and extra time. You weren't planning on cheating, were you, using a laptop? No, 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 never, no. I've always had all my exams, like they turn teachers. off the spell check and teachers watch and it's their laptop anyways. Well, the purpose of examinations is to show what you know. So these are sort of archaic rules that don't really reflect the digital society we're in. Professor Iona Novak is Cerebral Palsy Alliance Chair of Allied Health. Professor, I imagine this is not the first time you've dealt with an issue like this. In my career, I've dealt with hundreds of students who cannot access the curriculum physically because of their physical disability. We don't ask any student in New South Wales to leave their glasses or their hearing aids behind in case they have an unfair advantage during the examination. So if you have a physical disability and can't handwrite, typing seems like an obvious digital solution in this era. She's certainly a high achiever, isn't she, Layla? Yes, she is. She doesn't let the disability get in the way and she is wanting to send out a message that disabled people can achieve things. I have an international classification in athletics because I'm disabled enough to compete with disabled people on the world stage. I think Nessa should be able to tell me that too because at the end of the day I'm the same person on the track that I am at school. 
Layla hopes to study law when she graduates school next year, but she's worried she won't get the marks unless she can do her exams the only way she knows how, on a laptop. I think my message to Nessa is like, if you're going to say you're inclusive, like live by it because you're knocking people with disabilities back. And that's why a lot of people who are disabled drop out of school because there's no help for them. This situation is absolutely ludicrous, but Nessa won't budge. And what's so ironic is that HSC exams are going online in a matter of years anyway, with some English subjects ditching pen and paper from 2027. There is a simple fix to this. Let Layla sit her exams on a laptop. This is a rule that needs to be broken.